नमस्ते सब आई हेव ट्वेंटी मिनट्स टू टेल माई स्टोरी ऑफ माई फोर्टी फाइव इयर्स ऑफ माई करियर सो प्लीज बे विथ मी I always love adventure you know to to get excited to do many different things but i would like to start my story with my rafting adventure i used to go for rafting with a very good friend of mine mike eger who started rafting industry in nepal he was the father of river rafting so after experiencing a little bit about the rafting i had some new ideas that why don't i make my own raft why don't i build my own raft so with two of my friends we took all the necessary stuff we drove down to mugling it took us 6 days to build that raft and finally we went down to the river with the raft raft was made out of the oil barrels planks ropes very homemade so we after 6 days we <clears throat> we sailed down in the trishuli river from mugling and after about 3 hours we were so excited that our raft got capsized So by the time we managed to save our life it was already dark and this was back in 1974 this is how i looked like so we had to walk back from that site where the raft was had capsized i think we reached mugling 3 in the morning I don't know how many of you remember back in 1974 there were no roads from Mugling to Narengat it wasn't built then so we had to walk through the forest anyway so next day we had no slippers our clothes were wet then we had to look for a couple of pairs of slippers during 74 Mugling was a very small place maybe there were 6 7 eating joints and one or two shops who were selling different things so i bought three pair of slippers so as i was coming back the shop owner asked me about my our raft so i told him that it's bad luck that the, we had to abandon our whole trip so it's we have tied up in one of the stone there probably about 3 hours walk down the mugling then he said would you like to sell i said sure why not how much you are willing to pay he said i'll pay you 1500 rupees because i was ready to leave the old raft and come back to kathmandu so i said that's a good money in 1974 then i told him no give me 2000 <laughs> so we settled for 1600 rupees <laughs> then three of us we took a bus then went to pokra and we had a great time for 60 days <laughs> so my passion for rafting didn't stop it kept growing then i went to different other river sunkosi kaligandagi and many other rivers for rafting so with this passion for rafting i discovered korintar today in kolintar we have a, a resort called riverside spring resorts i guess this is this is one of the bonuses i got with the raft, raft trip right from the beginning i always wanted to try new things something different than what i've been doing so i got a chance to start a resort in nagarkot that was around 1982 so we had a nice spot of place just below the tower if you have been to tower in nagarkot 
And uh, so me and my partner, we started building the resorts. We had almost finished the restaurant part. And one fine day, we got a notice from the army that we have to vacate that space because they would like to start UN peacekeeping training center and they didn't have enough money. So we had about 52 openings, so they went to take all of that and eventually they did. So two years of hard work just went down the drain. And those days you could do nothing with the army in the Ponside area. So that was quite a <coughs> frustrating and, and a sad moment for me and my partner. So 80s was quite an interesting era for me. After the, after the resorts, then since I always loved food, there were big, big shortages of bakery products. So I got into this bakery business called Nanglo Bakeries. So we started making bread, different kind of cookies, different kind of goodies. So it worked very well. And after that, I didn't stop. Around the same 80s, I started a supermarket, probably the first one in Kathmandu. It's called Nanglo Bazaar. It was in Putli Sarak. So it was a new concept. When we started, people always felt hesitant to enter the store because they think that it could be very expensive. But little they, they knew that it was cheaper than any other, other shop, what we were selling. So slowly it caught on, and we started doing very well. But it just lasted for eight years because the building wasn't mine. I had to leave. So during the same time, I did another crazy thing that was starting a taxi business. We call Kathmandu Yellow Cab. This is the first cab company in Kathmandu. I mean, in a very organized way, where we had radio, where we had digital meter. I was the first one to introduce digital meter. <laughs> And since it was an organized company, if people forget something, if the driver charges more, they always had a place where they could complain. And I remember we, we returned so many valuable goods of the passengers who forgot to pick up from the taxi. But even this taxi, business lasted another couple of years because the government changed the rules. When I started, your yeah, taxi should not be less than 1,200cc size. So later they changed into 800cc and I couldn't compete our taxi with the 800cc small tiny Maruti with the same fare. So in 1990, I started this new company called the Bakery Cafe. The idea of the Bakery Cafe was to target the youth. And one of the things which I introduced in Bakery Cafe really was a big hit. That was chicken momo. <laughs> Those days, momos were made only out of either buffalo or pork or mutton meat. No one made a chicken momo. So when I told a lot of people that I'm introducing chicken momo, you know, it was something very unusual and people used to think that, will it taste good? I said, why not? Let's try it out. And today, the highest selling food in my ch outlet is a chicken momo. So we started hiring hearing impaired people in Bakery Cafe. A lot of people 
used to ask me that, why them? What's the specialty of the hearing impaired people? I had worked with them in many occasions, especially when I was organizing shows. They would always be in the gate, controlling the crowd, checking whether they've got tickets or no ticket. They won't let anybody enter without the proper ticket. So I found them very honest and very intelligent. Then I realized one day that, why not I you know, get these people and start working in restaurant? They'll be fantastic people to work for. So, <clears throat> I have a problem here. Sorry. So I took a challenge. Hiring the first batch, about 12 of them. And I personally trained them with the help of an entrepreneur, somebody who knew how to design language. And we started a brand new bakery cafe in New Manager. With 12 of these staff, from day one, running that place in service areas. And today, they proved that they are maybe better than us. So I started hiring more and more. Today we have more than 65 of them working for Bakery Cafe. The Bakery Cafe, today you see many of them. They just add something in front. It could be Kathmandu Bakery Cafe, it could be Alina's Bakery Cafe, so much so that they even copy our, our color combination because our color was green. So you see a lot of green bakery cafe. And it's, it's not easy to copy even the menu. The only thing which I wanted them to copy was my heading impaired staff, and they didn't. That's the saddest part. If they had copied that, today I have 65, maybe there could have been 600 of them working for the different restaurants. <laughs> My kids were growing, and we needed to send them to school. So me and my wife, we were looking around a good school in town. So my wife, she wasn't very happy, the school around. Then she was a journalist. She was a TV news editor. She was the first English news editor in Nepal TV. She was working there. there. So she was quite adamant that let's start the school. And I had to support her, being a husband. <laughs> but I won her. She's sitting right here. I won her, Rani. This is a one-way ticket. There's no looking back. But we decided to start the school. My kids did their schooling from Shubhatara. Now I see another Shubhataran right in front of me. So today we see hundreds of SFC graduates from Subhatara. They are all over the world doing different things, and they have made us really proud. <laughs> now I would like to take you back to the beginning of my, my journey, my restaurant journey. This is Cafe de Park, Ratna Park. I don't know how many of you can recognize Ratna Park like this. 
This is how Ratnapal looked like back in 1973. So, <clears throat> so a lot of people used to ask me, like, why would you like to open a restaurant? Well, I was a foodie, I loved food. I always loved friends to hang out with. I always loved good music. So there were no place in Kathmandu then where you could just go, have a cup of coffee with friends, listen to good music, a clean, decent place. There were none. So I saw the market there, that if I get into this business, definitely it will work. Then I knew nothing about the restaurant business. I knew nothing about the food except to eat. <laughs> so I started working on it. But luckily I had traveled to India right from the childhood with my father in his business trip. So I had chances to visit the restaurants, try out different food. Even in India those days, <clears throat> there were hardly any restaurants who would be serving the Western food. So I wanted to give something very new in town. So I started selling like hamburgers, pizzas, hot dogs, cappuccino, espresso coffee. So you could see in the signboard like I had hot dogs, hamburgers, popcorn, espresso coffee. And the most interesting part was like I started building the restaurant, but I had no cooks. And I didn't know how to cook food then. So I went to Delhi. Because in Delhi, I knew one restaurant where they sell exactly the kind of food I was looking for. So I, was, I used to hang out in that restaurant every day, trying to make friends with the staff. So it took me almost two weeks, you know, to, to have a few staffs as a friend. So we used to go out, have beer with them. Then I told them, can I meet your cooks? <laughs> I said, well, fine. OK, you come after 10.30. Their duty will be over. Then you can meet them. So I did that. and. Uh, so I told them, I'm from Nepal, I'm opening a restaurant. Would you like to come and work for me? <laughs> then they said, how much are you going to pay for us? How much are you making? OK, I'll pay you double. So that's how I got the first two batch of staff, the cooks from Delhi. They are from one of those groups. And another interesting thing about Cafe de Park was we had the best music in town. Because back in 1973, you couldn't go out and buy the music as you could do today. There were no music shops. No, you couldn't download in the YouTube. <laughs> so, so every evening after I closed my restaurant, I used to go to the Frick Street. That's where I grew up. OK? Then there was another joint, Maruhiti, in Nepali. But, but every tourist used to call that place Pig Alley, because there were lots of pigs moving around. So they used to call it Pig Alley. So that's where all the, those flower children people used to hang out. And I used to go there after closing the restaurant and have hot lemon. Those days, hot lemon used to be very famous. And I used to go table to table and ask them, do you have any music to sell? You know? So there were people that they needed money, and they would sell. And you believe it or not, it used to cost 120 bucks for a cassette and back in 1973. In 120 rupees, you could buy a bicycle then. So it was so difficult to get the music. But I, I collected in this fashion, and I had the best music. That's how I could draw 
so many youths in my restaurant. So it became very popular very quickly. And another thing was I had, I had in one of the windows a popcorn machine. So I used to have a crowd of people watching. Like here, Mission Le Makai Butego, you know? <laughs> like it, it, it will be popping, it will be popping, you know? And it was so much fun to watch the, you know, corn popping out of the machine. And I had the soda fountain, that was something very new for Kathmandu, and, uh, and ice cream, softy ice cream. And I have a joke for the softy ice cream. I used to sell for one rupee a corn. So one old man came and he asked for a corn of ice cream. So I gave him the ice cream. Then he literally came and hit me. And I said, what happened? He said, what happened? So I thought I, uh, I thought that he knew the ice cream would be cold. You know, so this is one of the joke I remember selling ice cream then. And today, you know, I, I run a, uh, a very big ice cream factory called Azabko. I don't know how many people have had Azabko. <clears throat> and another interesting thing is, a lot of youngsters used to walk by and read those, those signs in the billboard. They used to shout, Hot dog, start off with good. <laughs> like they used to say that, oh, they sell tato kukur in this restaurant. <laughs> See, that used to be a lot of fun, you know, the, 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 the youths screaming at. Now, another interesting thing, like after two years of running the restaurant, I made some money. My first 50,000 rupees. So I was in a big dilemma. What do I do with this 50,000 rupees? Do I buy a car? You could buy a, a brand new Toyota for 40,000 then. Do I buy land? I could buy two rupees of land because I didn't have a house then. I was staying in a rented place. So do I travel? So I was in a big dilemma. What do I do with this 50,000 rupees? So I chose, I will travel. <laughs> I still remember to fly to the States was $1,000. Even today, it's around the same figure. But then, a dollar used to be 10 rupees. Today, 110 rupees. <laughs> so I got the visa from the States, the US Embassy. Then I flew to New York. And I had a few friends in the States, so from East Coast, I drove along with a friend, two other friends, to the West Coast. I always had, had a dream that one day I will go to San Francisco. So I did that. We had a small VW, so drove all, all the way to San Francisco from New York. So I had planned to be there for a short while, but it went on for a couple of months traveling all over the U.S., doing odd jobs. And let me tell you, that was like going to a university for me. So after returning from U.S., I thought I should move out move on from Cafe de Park, Ratna Park, to a new area, very upcoming new area, that was Darwar Mark. That's when the Nanglo started. And it's a very interesting story. A lot of people ask, how did you think of the name Nanglo? You know? A lot of people still ask, why Nanglo? Because then the Nanglo pasle means you know, you have a person sitting in the roadside and selling cigarettes 
and pong and things like that. So that used to be called Nanglo Pasal. So when I chose this name, a lot of people thought that I was a bit crazy. Why a name like that? But let me tell you a story how this name came up. So initially, <clears throat> when I started this Nanglo Cafe and Pub, it was a very small place. We had probably about 18 stools, all stools, no proper chair. And the bar was there, small kitchenette was there. And the restaurant was ready. And still, I didn't have the name. So I was sitting with a friend of mine, Tom Ahrens. He used to run this INGO called World Neighbors. So what he had done was he had started a NGO for the destitute women who could, you know, weave nanglo, who could weave the cloth, who could do so many things. And he asked me, Sham, could you, would you like some nanglo? I said, yes, if you could make the small size. Yes, I would like to, you know, introduce these nanglo instead of the proper plates, because certain food like you know, french fries, sandwiches, hamburgers, I could easily serve in these uh, nanglos. So one evening we were sitting before we opened the restaurant. So I told Tom, hey Tom, I've got three pages of name, just go through that and see what's the best name. Then he laughed at me and he said, hey, your name is right in front of you. Because one of my staff had just served some snacks in, the, in nanglo. So he said, that's, that's the name of your restaurant. So I said, OK, that's it. So that's how we decided to call it Nangla. So <clears throat> so it went on. Then, it's never looking back. The rest, you know, it's a history. Let me share you one thing in my stories. I've closed more restaurants and businesses than what I'm running today. So I never gave up. Like, I was just lis listening to Alan. He said, never ever give up. I fully agree with him. Never ever give up. Keep up your new innovation. Open your mind for learning new things. Today I'm 65, I'm still learning every day. Every day new things about my business, new things about society, new things in the world. So keep your mind open. And thank you very much. It was wonderful being here, sharing my story with all of you. I would like to end my story with Bhagwan Buddha's saying. It says, when you move your focus from your competition to contribution, life becomes celebration. Never try to defeat people. Just win their hearts, Bhagwan Buddha. Thank you very much.